uh, an anonymous questioner asks us about pi rads. And, and this means I'm going to have to give you another scale. Um, and, and most scales are five point scales in medicine. We call them clinometric scores. And uh, usually five is the worst, one is the best. And the reason it's a five point scale is there's a middle ground. There's the not so sure or the sitting in the fence position. And that's usually uh, gets attributed the number three. Um, PIRADS is no different. Uh, PIRADS is used in MRI scoring. Um, if you have a PIRADS one or two, basically your scan is normal, green light. Uh, if you have a PIRADS three, the radiologist aren't so sure. There might be cancer present, there could be inflammation, they can't make up their minds. Uh, so that's the amber. Um, and, and then there's PIRADS four and five where the radiologist is of the view that the probability of prostate cancer is very high, PIRADS4, uh, or extremely high, PIRADS5. And when they attribute a 5, they're virtually certain that cancer is present. And that's associated often with about a 95% probability. And of course, that's the, that's the red light. So you can turn a 5-point scale into a 3-point scale, green, amber, red, which I think is kind of easier to manage. Green, reassured, nothing to worry about. Red, uh, we need to um, uh, do a biopsy to find out what this lesion within the prostate is. And then amber is the middle ground. And in, certainly in my books, that's a discussion. You know, and it's a discussion about how much certainty the patient wants. Uh, are they willing to wait? And we have two options when we have amber. Uh, we can use time and repeat an MRI scan in a year and watch the PSA during that time. Sometimes the amber lesions go away, which means there were inflammation. Um, other times they get bigger or more intense, which probably means they're prostate cancer. Or um, if the PIRADS3 or amber uh, is, represents a lesion, you can, you can go straight in and biopsy it. But the yield, i.e. the probability of finding clinically significant disease in PIRADS3, uh, or amber disease, as, as, as we might call it, is much, much less. And we sometimes use other features to kind of help us decide. Um, the relationship between PSA and prostate volume, or PSA density, is quite useful. And if you have a low PSA density, low PSA, huge prostate, uh, then the chances of finding prostate cancer are much reduced, by about five times, actually. Um, versus a small prostate and high PSA, which would, which would confer a high PSA density. And we're learning a lot more about what it is that might help us get off the fence so that we can reassure emphatically or tell a man that actually what's needed next is a biopsy. And the way we're doing that is working with biomarker companies, people developing blood tests and urine tests, uh, that tell us a little bit about the proteins and um, signal that the prostate cancer can give us to help us decide whether we should go to the red side or indeed to the green side of a PIRADS3. So I hope that's helpful. That's two scales now uh, that we've done. Um, and yes, we, we, we use that a lot. 